We knew the water loss in the pond was when this waterfalls was running. After checking all the edges, we determined that there was no leak there. So I came up here to the biofalls and lo and behold, you can kind of see this in through here. I kind of dug back and there's an enormous amount of water coming out from the biofalls and escaping behind this liner, forcing the pond to lose water and leak. So what we need to do today is, is we need to pull apart this top waterfalls, pull the liner off, detach the face plate, which is right here, which is that, that biofalls lip. Detach that from the liner, pull everything out, get everything nice and dry, pull up some slack, re-silicone it, screw it back in, and rebuild this top waterfalls. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What is up everybody, Chris from Team Aquascape. Today, we are gonna show you guys how to reseal a biofalls. As you can see, we are inside of our retail store here at Aqualand. We still have a little bit of ice and snow on the ground, but what we noticed after we did kind of the renovations in the bullfrog koi pond here inside the store, which is this pond right here, we started losing water after we turned the pumps back on. And actually at a much more drastic rate than when before we did any of the renovations, which was like extremely concerning to us. So what we did was just to kind of walk you through the process of how we isolated the leak to the waterfalls itself was one is we realized that with everything running, we were losing an enormous amount of water. And I'm talking a couple inches over the course of a day, which is not a good thing, especially inside the store here at Aquascape. It's never acceptable when it's a water feature indoors. It's a huge problem and it needs to be dealt with immediately. So what we did was is we shut the pond down and we wanted to make sure that the water level in the pond stabilized at a certain point. So we shut everything off, realized that the pond itself held water, which was a huge sigh of relief, being that we ended up seeming a huge hole back here where the old skimmer used to be and ended up adding on liner back over here. So we had about a 15 to 17 foot seam that I was nervous about. And then we also had the cover tape that was patching the hole from the previous skimmer that worried me a little. But when we realized that the pond held water, I knew that it either had to be in the plumbing or somewhere in the stream and waterfalls or something to do with this bowl. What we did was is rather than firing up the waterfall immediately, we let the bowl and the circulation jets run. By doing that, we are able to isolate. If we then lose water with this thing running in the circulation jets, we would know that it's somewhere in this bowl. Turns out we didn't lose any water and everything stayed at the same level with this thing running for about 48 hours. So what we did was, is we went up here and focused our attention on the waterfalls itself. Real quick, we have Garrett and Grant back here who are some of our service members. So we're gonna go ahead and coach them through how to reseal biofalls. It's gonna be very easy to do it here inside. So we're gonna go ahead and use today as a classroom and teach them on how to reseal biofalls. So good practice for them, but it also gives us the opportunity to film the whole thing and show you guys as well. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up the waterfalls. You mind hitting the receiver? And we're gonna get this waterfalls up and running. Now what we do is we're gonna come over here and just check all of the edges along the backside over here. Now we've got a couple close spots, but it's always a good practice to check all the edges. So you come back here, Make sure that the liner is high enough through all these pooling areas all the way back up and around all down and through here all along that side as well after going through poking around and looking at all the edges in through here we realized that there were no weird folds in the liner no water was getting out in any of the clip areas where it was close so my the next area of focus is coming up here to the biofalls itself Over the course of time, the silicone seal where the liner attaches to the biofalls itself can break down and pull away. And this is over the course of time. This thing's been in here for about seven years. There's always foot traffic, walking up and down, billy goating up and down the berm to water the plants and that kind of stuff. So we knew the water loss in the pond was when this waterfalls was running. After checking all the edges, we determined that there was no leak there. So I came up here to the biofalls and lo and behold, you can kind of see this in through here. I kind of dug back and there's an enormous amount of water coming out from the biofalls and escaping behind this liner, forcing the pond to lose water and leak. So what we need to do today is, is we need to pull apart this top waterfalls, pull the liner off, detach the face plate, which is right here, which is that, that biofalls lip, detach that from the liner, pull everything out, get everything nice and dry, pull up some slack, re-silicone it, screw it back in and rebuild this top waterfalls. That's a, a bridge version of what we're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and set up a time-lapse and we're also gonna highlight 
highlight some of the key details that you don't want to overlook when doing this. So we're going to slow it down and walk you through this process. All right, so real quick before we get started, I just want to go through some of the tools that we're going to need. We're definitely going to need some foam to be able to seal up behind the rock, in between the rock and liner to get the water to flow over the rocks the way we want. We've got a couple tubes of silicone here. We have a Phillips screwdriver, which comes in handy for the screws. We also have some additional screws in case the ones that are up there are corroded and no longer functional. We've got a piece of underlayment, and then we also have a small drop liner in case we don't have enough slack in that liner, which I believe we do, but in case we don't, we could always do an overlap out of that top waterfall there because of the elevation change being so significant. So what we could do is we could attach the drop liner to the, the spillway of the biofalls and then lay it over top of the underliner. As long as that underliner stays up high, we could do it that way. What we're gonna try and do is actually attach the existing liner to the biofall. If that doesn't work, we'll address that later on in the video. And then of course we have a heat gun. That helps just to get that liner nice and dry so that we can get a nice tight bond with the silicone attaching the liner to the faceplate of the biofall. So that's kind of it. You may or may not want to have a pry bar or a shovel in some of these applications. And then we also have an extension cord just in case we need it. So after talking about the tools, the other thing that we wanted to make sure that we did before we got started was go ahead and shut that waterfall down. We want to go ahead and let that water kind of drain down. That way, as we're pulling things back, there's not excess water up there as we're working. And then we end up stirring everything up and making this water dirty. Turning the waterfalls off, let it drain down. So now we can go ahead and get into the removal of these frame rocks around the biofalls and then we'll start pulling that thing apart. So as we're getting into this, one thing I neglected to mention is we're gonna go ahead and undo the check valve to the plumbing line going to the bottom of that biofalls. What that'll do is that will allow all the water that's in that biofalls to drain out back through the plumbing line and backflow into the pond. This is all good because everything's all inside and the water will go back into the pond. So Garrett's gonna come over here and go ahead and disconnect the check valve. It feels like it's this one right there. You see that water's flowing out, and that means our bio falls up there starting to drain. If you're doing this in a skimmer, make sure your weir door is open, otherwise it's gonna push up against it and maybe lock it shut, so pay attention. All right, so just to kind of get started up here, inevitably we have to move these rocks out of the way. This one will probably just roll forward because it's enormous, and I really don't wanna have to move it any further than I have to. So what I did was I made sure to kind of rake out as much of this gravel in through here as I could. I wanna prevent it from getting caught in between the folds in the liner so that if I roll the rock down, I don't wanna get a, a rock pinch between the liner and then end up inevitably putting a hole in the liner up here in the screen. Nothing would suck more than fixing one problem, meanwhile creating another. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a pry bar or a round point shovel and just kind of pry all these rocks apart. You don't want to get in here and start hacking at them because you don't want to put a hole in the liner. So you do need to be careful. And there's a lot of these rocks, especially this one, that's kind of propped up the way that it sits. But I need to be able to get back here so that I can pull everything apart. So all this rock, gravel, that's all foam up in here that's all garbage and gonna come out we've got a five gallon bucket over here that we'll throw all that trash into and then we are going to rework this waterfalls make it a little bit more interesting than just one maybe one big veil style falls so this will probably get put back together a little bit differently but take your time when you're up here prying these rocks apart you don't want to make a small pinhole in the liner and then not be able to find it later So you guys have gotten a majority of the rock out of here. Remember earlier we talked about getting a lot of the gravel out so it doesn't get caught between the folds down here. So we went ahead and did that. We may not have to actually move this frame rock after all because we have enough space, I believe, to kind of get back in here and get to these screws back in through here. Maybe with like a, one of those little small screwdrivers. But I am going to go ahead and move this rock as well because I want to rebuild this waterfalls. While we're here, we might as well take the opportunity to go ahead and maybe do something a little different than just that slate created veil style waterfalls that just kind of dumped down in this pool. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this rock over into here, allowing a little bit more room for maybe a drop and then another drop down in here and play off of all of these frame rocks. I don't wanna come in here and completely redo the waterfalls because that would just take an enormous amount of time, but we might as well take the opportunity to go ahead and rebuild this thing and just give it a little bit of a facelift as well. I'm gonna put the camera down, move a couple of these rocks, and then we'll go ahead and 
and get the screws off of the faceplate over in through here. You can see they're okay. There's a couple that might be a little bit corroded in through here just because you can see just the hardness of the water. It ends up chewing through some of this hardware, which will happen, but it's that silicone seal that obviously went bad. And I want to eliminate this fold in the liner here. Yeah, you can see how much liner we have kind of pinned in through here. So if we can pull a lot of this slack out, which is another reason why when we are coaching people and teaching them how to hook up the biofalls for the first time, we want them to leave some of this slack liner in there. By having this excess, it allows you to pull that liner up and then be able to create new screw holes and cut the liner to fit to that biofall snout. We'll show you that here in a second, but I just wanted to point out the importance of this slack in the liner here will make our lives so much easier as we're resealing it. All right, everybody. So we've moved some racks around. We got that left frame rack out, made plenty of room for Grant to go ahead and get started. So what he's gonna do now is he's just gonna remove the old face plate. You can see all of our screws right in there. And by removing that, that's gonna free up the liner. We're gonna pull it up and be able to reattach it. There's one. See, they're in pretty good shape. Sometimes they are really corroded, really nasty, but these look like they're gonna be okay. Can make unscrewing them sometimes difficult if they're really corroded. You never wanna use a drill on these because you could strip them or over tighten them and you could damage the seal that way. All right, so we lost access a little bit with this rock in the way and we're gonna prove to you that bigger isn't always better. Got the perfect little tool for the job right here. So we've got the previous hardware pulled out of there. You can see it's still in relatively good shape. I think honestly what really happened and how the seal got broken is just everybody kind of climbing up here, watering the plants. I think something just ended up pulling down on this liner and then breaking that silicone seal. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the spillway lip off or the biofalls lip off. And then right down here, this was our problem area. So you can see kind of as I peel it back, it's coming off so super easily and see all that water in between we want to avoid that. That should be dry if the seal itself was good, okay? So what we'll do is we'll pull this liner back, kind of clean this all up, and then the cool thing is we have all of this excess liner that we can pull up and go ahead and give ourselves brand new holes all the way across. But just by simply having that four to six inch fold of slack, it allows us now to get that liner all the way up here. Very, very important to have that so that in the event that you have to reseal this thing, you've got it. So we noticed something as we were pulling the liner apart, kind of cleaning everything up. As we started to clean the face of the biofalls itself, we noticed that these grommets are deteriorating basically from the water side out. So what's happening is the interior threads of these grommets, because of the water, just got really, really bad and then they weren't able to hold those brass screws in place. You can see we've already taken this one completely out and how we do that is, is I will take a flathead screwdriver and what I'll do is I will put it in there. You can use an Allen key if that works and then simply get some pressure and start spinning them. Now, sometimes they will strip out on you, okay? If you do that, then you're gonna need to do is a drill bit and then kind of bore those things out. But a lot of times the threads in here are so bad that the whole thing just starts to deteriorate and you can see that that one just cracked on me. So we're gonna take our time, get all of these grommets out and we are going to put in new grommets and what these do is these thread into to the old holes and then our screws will end up threading into right there that hole right there okay so we're gonna finish this up finish cleaning all this up get these all out of here and go ahead and replace all of these because they are completely falling apart that's part of the back side of the grommet there and it's just crumbling in my hand so we're gonna take our time make sure we get all new grommets put in here that way those screws have something to get a good bite onto and maintain the compression to create that watertight seal with the silicone
So now we've got the old grommets out. We had to clean up the holes. Some of them gave us a little bit of a fight and we ended up having to use this drill bit right here, just a comb bit. And you wanna make sure that you don't overbore and then make these holes any bigger than they already are. This was more just to kind of break up the remnants of the existing corroded grommets and just kind of work it in there. Just get it so that it kind of breaks everything apart and then manually pull out all the little pieces and then make sure it's all nice and clean. Now, Garrett is going to take the grommets and those fit inside of an Allen key. Occasionally that flathead screwdriver that I showed you earlier in the video like this, they will also fit on and able to twist in there. But these are going to be inserted into all 15 of these holes going along the face of the bile falls. You see how he inserted the Allen key into the grommet and then he's gonna go ahead and just tighten. You don't wanna over tighten because then you'll just go ahead and keep spinning. Okay, good. Fresh, hot new grommets all the way across, and they are seated very, very nicely flush up to the face of the biofalls. That way, when we end up attaching this liner, there's not an enormous amount of silicone that needs to be applied because the gap is that much less and a much tighter seal with the compression of the faceplate. So we need to come in here, kind of clean some of this stuff out. Then what we'll do is we'll drape that liner up, attach the top two corners of the biofall snout, cut our liner, back it back off, apply some silicone, and then we'll start sealing. All right. So we are at the point now where we are gonna go ahead and reattach the liner to the biofalls itself. Okay, a couple things we're gonna need. One, obviously the snout to the spillway or the face plates. Um, I call it different things in different videos, but this is what's going to be on the outside of the liner that we are going to screw to the biofalls itself. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna have compression by screwing this to the biofalls and getting those screws locked in nice and tight to those grommets. Obviously we have our liner here. We also have our biofall screws it's a little bit different of a hardware for the biofalls versus the signature series skimmers. These already have a washer machined into the head itself, so you're gonna to wanna to use these on the biofalls, okay? Another thing I have is, of course, my Phillips head screwdriver. I've got my knife, I've got my silicone, and then I'm gonna use my tiny little Allen wrench, and I'm just gonna use this as a hole punch. You can have a, an awl or something like that, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this because it's handy. There's the leftover grommets that we have. So to start, we wanna make sure that this is all clean, dry, free of debris, same with the face of the biofalls here. Now what I'm going to do is, this is the beauty of having that slack in the liner, because notice now, all of the old screw holes are well above the height of the biofalls here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of stretch this out, give myself a little bit of slack, make sure it's it's um, even side to side and there are no weird folds kind of in here along the face, because you wanna get a nice, smooth attachment to the face of the biofalls. So I've got plenty, and I still have a little bit of slack down below. Where this is gonna get challenging is here in a few minutes when I hop about three steps ahead of where I'm at. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just set the lip or the snout of the biofalls up against the biofalls, kind of get it set where it needs to go. Then I'll come over here and I'm going to make sure that all of my prior screw holes are out of the way up above everything. Then I will take my hole punch and I'm going to find this top screw hole, right? The one that was this corner on the original, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and find that and then get one screw attached up here in this corner. Right now, looks like right about there. So you can see I've got the hole punch. In this case, the Allen wrench that is my hole punch is, is all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep this in place. I'm gonna take one of my screws, go ahead and get it started just in that top corner. We're only gonna do the top two corners at this point. So I went ahead and maybe I should have used a little bit bigger of an Allen wrench because I had a hard time finding that hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw the screw into the liner and then I'm just gonna go ahead and get it started in that top corner grommet, okay? Get that started. The reason it's important to do one side and kind of get it not snug or super tight, but what I wanna do is I wanna be able to pull the liner away from that initial screw. I wanna be able to pull it the opposite direction to help get a lot of these folds out of here. So what I'm gonna do, go ahead and just pull this, not super tight, but snug, so that I don't have any folds between the snout or the faceplate of the biofalls and the biofalls itself. I'm gonna go up a size in my Allen wrench, get myself a little bit easier with time finding that hole. Yeah. 
second one's in place now, okay? Notice I don't have any wrinkles or folds in the liner. Went ahead and got my, my hole punched through. I'm gonna take the other screw, get things started if possible. Being a bear today, okay? Got it started, I'll come over here, okay? Slack out, there we go, that's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and just hand tighten that. Then what I'll do is notice how all of the old screw holes are now well above any of the liner that we're going to be attaching to the face of the vial ball. So now I'm gonna come up here and go ahead and take my knife. It's important to have a sharp blade. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of the excess at the top. Don't take too much off, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off some of this. And what that's gonna allow me to do is really just to manipulate this with my hand. So then I'm gonna come about a half inch in from the inside portion of this snout. I start about an inch, inch and a half down. I go straight up, super important to have a fresh blade, especially on working on existing liner, okay? I'm pulling it with my offhand. You don't really want to saw at it, which is why it's nice to have a fresh blade. Come over here. Look at that. Grant's got that's a fresh blade. Gold okay? tipped. Gold tipped. So you come down here, and then when you get to the corner, what you don't want to do is you don't want to do something like that and then like that. What'll happen is, is at that point right there at the corner, it will be a weak point in the liner. So what you want to do is you want to kind of camper or round those edges like that, okay? I'll show you that. So just above the faceplate. Now I'm pulling with my offhand, letting the knife do the work, okay? I'm gonna do, let me go ahead and stop there. And I am simply going to start back at this corner, come straight down. Get to just a little above that corner, just kind of round that edge right there. And then that will take me right along the face. And that is that, okay? Makes sense? All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take these top two screws off. Now what I'm gonna do is I've detached the two corner screws that were holding the liner in place. I'm gonna flip the snout around and I'm gonna go ahead and put these screws back in each corner. And then if you remember those holes that I had earlier, first we gotta make sure we get all of this little plot of foam out of here. We want that snout to get some good compression. So I had a little bit of excess foam, but that's that hole right there from the hole punch and where the screw came through. So I'm gonna go ahead and just attach that liner with the snout facing backwards. And what I like to do is I just like to screw it in just a little bit with my hands, get that liner seated in there. Then I will take the rest of the liner in my hand, put that through the top corner, find that hole where it came through, and like this, like that. Again, kind of screw it in. Now I have the liner placed up against the inside lip of the biofoil. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to come over here and I'm going to apply a bead of silicone. I brought over a couple of half tubes earlier, which is only about how much it takes. It takes about a half to three quarters of a tube. But I'm going to go ahead and just start a brand new one in the event that I need a little bit more. I don't want to run out with one of those half tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and just start it with a fresh one. And what I want to do is make sure that I get a bead of silicone all the way down and across all these screw holes. So just watch my hands. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to start at the bottom on this one. Get Get that one screw hole really, really well, and just notice how just applying a liberal bead all the way across. And then anywhere I have a screw hole, I like to drop just a little bit extra. So real quick, we've got the silicone. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to take the snout of the biofalls as well as the liner, the top two screws. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out any weird folds. You wanna make sure that when doing this, the liner itself doesn't kind of bunch up into here or isn't rolled back into the snout of the biofalls like that, right? I wanna make sure, give myself enough, and it kind of almost flares up on the inside of the biofalls. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's the look that I'm going for. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to start over here because this is going to be my trouble area. Pull that liner back. It's wanting to start to roll up on me in here, which I don't want to have happen. I'm going to go ahead and just get this one started right about there. Okay, good. I'm going to give it a couple of turns just to get it started, okay? Now what I want to 
gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my hole punch and I'm going to make sure my liner is good everywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and just start dropping in some of these screws into the hole punch. I wanna start at one of these middle ones down on the bottom and what that's gonna do is that's going to keep that face plate nice and snug all the way through there as I go through and start to really tighten everything up. Now it's time to clean up the tools and start putting this waterfall back together. We have all the screws in, new screws, new grommets, fresh bead of silicone, brand new holes. Everything looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing sit while I clean up. You wanna let this stuff cure 30, 45 minutes before you even attempt to fire up that waterfalls. You wanna make sure that that silicone is curing nicely. Of course, that time frame is all dependent on climatic conditions. Here inside of the retail store, relatively humid, but it is warm, so the silicone should cure pretty quickly. 